السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back after long vacation and I hope that everyone did well in his exams and there is inshallah I think there is exam in Thursday for the Arabian board I hope you the I wish for you the best performance. Uh, the voice is clear. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, inshallah, we'll uh, talk today about uh, like revision cases uh, oriented by the exam. Inshallah, I, I hope that you can enjoy it. Uh, so, this case um, is frequent in the exam. It comes to you like this. And they ask you as a differential diagnosis. And uh, so there is like top differential diagnosis in your mind. Yes, our best, thank you. So it will be METS and TB or disseminated granulomatosis like TB. Um, and maybe fungal. In the bronchial separate. Yeah. Infection or metastasis tumor. Yeah, exactly. So the, until proved otherwise, you will think about metastasis. And uh, in this case, try to search for any clue in the image. For example, if you find like humerus and you find like prothesis, so maybe this patient have uh, like osteosarcoma and he is operated. Um, you will search for the key if it's come to you as a spotting case. So he asks you for one differential diagnosis. In this case, you will be, uh, you will limit the differential for one of them. You will find the clue either TB or metastasis or fungal infection. Uh, let's have a look in this case. Yes, the typical, typical one with active TB. Yeah, active TB with cavitation, large apical cavity. Uh, maybe uh, he will ask you about uh, how you differentiate between uh, tumoral or malignant uh, cavitation and how you differentiate it between the between it and with, between the cavity like fungal or TB. Yes? Can you differentiate between both? Yeah, if you find like three in bud, but three in bud, you can, it can be presented in both uh, yeah, in both types, either malignant or in. Yes. Okay, this is another case. Miliary TB. Yeah, so. Uh, you will think about disseminated multiple uh, micronodules, right? And you will think that it could be one of the good differentials to mention again, uh, TB. And um, how you could know, but if you go to the CT, maybe I can show you the, there is again. Randomly distributed nodules. Yeah, micro nodules in random distribution. So when it is in random distribution,
Yes, uh, so it could be uh, metastasis or uh, TB. Uh, there is something that you can uh, consider when you talk about sarcoidosis, that the, the, the distribution of the nodules, it is in not a random distribution like this. It should be like bronchovascular, very bronchovascular. Maybe I will show you after a few uh, minutes something uh, to be like sarcoidosis, typical one. So you can know the difference. But this nodule is distributed in uh, like random distribution. So more to be with uh, TB as you mentioned, yes. So uh, maybe this one you can think about uh, centrilobular nodules. I hope that you can uh, show them here. Yes, in the higher resolution, centrally lobular with ground glass um, nodules, centrally lobular ground glass nodules, yes. Hypersensitivity in what? You can think about bronchiolitis and one of the important causes like hypersensitivity in mitis. Um, I see some answers, yes, respiratory, interstitial lung disease, um, just I want to show you this. So you can think about hypersensitivity in mitis or endobronchial spread of a tumor as well. This one is typical for uh, the exam and the almost in every exam you can see it. Uh, this is a feature of Langerhans cell histocytosis. So this is the conflict. Is it like Langerhans cell histocytosis or uh, LAM, lymphangio Um The differential can include both, but when you see like normal parenchyma in between, so maybe it can be more with the LAM and also the history. If, for example, this is a male or female, so it's important to check for the smoking history. For example, if you check the clinical presentation for this patient, you will find this is a woman. And uh, maybe uh, you will search for any associated clinical manifestation of LAM. So um, this one was lymphangioleumimatosis. Um, yes, and its association with Famous association with what? Tuberous sclerosis. Tuberous sclerosis, yeah, from the MCQ. Just to make warming up before we start to go uh, more difficult cases. Um, so this one. UIB. So honeycombing, that's why you mentioned UIB with the honeycombing uh, effect. And this denotes that this patient developed fibrosis. Thank you, Islam. And uh, dua, okay. I see like Nirmin also, I, I forget to check the chat, sorry. Uh, I see many good answers, even uh, for the first question about the cavity. Yes, thick or regular is malignancy. Okay, thank you. Um, so this patient, uh, usual interstitial pneumonia with the honeycombing would be the best example for this. You can check the honeycombing, especially with many arrows, as you see here, with many uh, arrows that have this fibrosis. So you, you are talking about honeycombing, which is typical for UIB, usual interstitial pneumonia, or IBF, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis whatever you, you, with the conflict between the names. But anyway, it is fibrosis. This patient will need lung transplantation. So it's very critical when you mention UIB. So it's like you, sell, you tell him like it's a malignancy. So take care if you mention that it's UIB. So it means that 
lung transplant. Okay, so what do you think about this? TB. Again, TB. Why do you mention that could be TB? I see it's many answer, Marwa. Thank you. There is some fibrosis, upper loop fibrosis. So typical sites for fibrosis. Thank you. And uh, maybe you will search for lymphadenopathy, but this one because is reactivation or post primary TB. So maybe it's not very common to find Also not common to find the pleura effusion. Maybe you will suspect like cavitary lesion here. And when you check the lateral image, you will find it in the apical segment of the left lower lobe, which is typical for typical site for TB. As you know, the post primary TB favors the posterior segment of the upper lobe or the upper segment of the lower loop, okay? Why? Because they like it in the MCQ to mention that due to higher oxygen tension. Um, as you see in the post primary TB, not, it's not enough just to say TB. It's important to think, especially when you are in the oral exam, to think about post primary TB. As this is adult patient and you have fibrosis, so you have typical characterization, okay? Um, especially with the cavitation. And you have, I think, three C, cavitation and consolidation and one T, which is three in bud. Yes, three in bud. If, especially if you find the three in bud, um, that means that this is reactivation TB. And they will ask you one more question about if you find this, it could be like all TB. So it's important is to make like a follow-up to check previously and the current to see if this is really re re reactivation or this is like uh, established process happen and this is the sequel. So all this, if you go through the oral exam, so you should be aware, uh, you describe, think about TB, then don't stop. Try to mention to the examiner that you know the, the difference between the primary TB and the post primary TB. And you know the differences between, and it's important to mention the comparison. So when you mention, I will compare with previous study, the examiner will be very happy with you, okay? And uh, sure that in the CT is characteristic to see lights, okay? Uh, you can see some bronchiectatic changes even with some fibrotic changes and very ugly appearance. Don't forget boost primary TB is very important for the exam. And when you go to this one, what do you think? I try to read the, uh, all the chat. Bolan syndrome. Try to uh, mention like a key when you answer um, even for the, yeah, the yeah. we are talking about the title that left lung hyperducing, left lung, yes, exactly. So you are talking about like either chest tool abnormality or macloid, which is hypovascular lung, or maybe an asthmatic attack or acute asthmatic attack, yeah. So what is the clue here? With hyperducing lung, lung? Normal lung volume. Yeah, so normal lung volume, so you can consider. Also, you can see the hilum is okay. So is the vascularity and the hilum is fine. So macloid it will not be the best option for this. It will be maybe chest wall abnormality like Poland. Poland might be. So try to find the clue in the case. If you have something like this and 
mentioned that you will think about three differential diagnoses at least. And one of them will be uh, chest wall abnormality. And uh, if he show you something related to Poland, like congenital abnormality in the hand or whatever, you can think about it. Thank you, Marwa. And one of the most important, the most operative, like this a female patient and she have mastectomy, perfect. So this patient with this appearance, we will ask you, what do you think? If there is a mass or not? Why didn't they just sign Okay, so this you will think about Yeah, if you think about anterior mediastinal mass, perfect. Okay, so you have about four T's. Which one you will recommend? Or five T's, whatever. Marwa, thank you. So what do you think? Is it any clue? Lesion continuous superior limb is the thyroid, yes. I think. So it could be like a thyroid. Yes, thyroid lesion goiter. So lymphoma, thymic lesion, or thyroid. And one of the clues that it could be continuous above with the uh, thyroid. Yes. Uh, can you mention? Can you mention it? Thank you. Can you mention this cervical thoracic sign? Who answered? <laughs> okay, so when it's, yes, I, I hear you. You can proceed. Yeah, so th this is the most of cervical, uh, cervical, uh, cervical uh, th thoracic sign. When you find the shadow, is above the clavicle and continuous with the thyroid. So, and also you can check in the lateral, it is in the severe aspect here. And this is confluent with one triangle, which is important triangle here, and obliterating this triangle. So this could be again the thyroid, yes. Okay. And when you go, you will ask for CT, sure. And when you ask for CT, you will find that it is con confluent with the thyroid, so it is thyroid lesion. The upper border is not seen, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dua. And uh, when you go to this case, what do you think? Posterior <laughs> Uh, retrocardiac mass. Middle mediastinum is the lateral. It look more with the middle mediastinum. Yes, mm -hmm. it look more because a posterior mediastinum should be, you have already lat lateral view, so it should be like uh, there. But uh, maybe in the EB, uh, you can maybe uh, confuse, but in the lateral, it is in the middle mediastinum. So, what is the most important differential in the middle mediastinum? Either lymphadenopathy or vascular abnormality, or as Russia and uh, Dua and uh, Sumaya, uh, cyst. So this one could be a cyst, like congenital cyst, bronchogenic, or pericardial. Here it is bronchogenic cyst. If you go to the CT, maybe it will be more easy if you find it related to the bronchus. So it is a bronchogenic cyst, is not well seen here, but it is a bronchogenic cyst anyway. Uh, let's go to a similar one, which maybe you can now think about what you mentioned already. So what do you think about this mass? Is it anterior or posterior middle mediastinum? It is posterior, posterior mediastinum, yeah. And also you can see clearly that the paraspinal line here is displayed. This means that this, from the AB just, you can say that it's posterior mediastinum. And you can see here the location again is posterior. So you are talking about wow. urogenic. Perfect. Wow. Yeah, perfect. Russia. So we are talking about posterior mediastinum and one of the most important differential neurogenic tumor. Also lymphoma. Wow. 
lymphoma it should be there. And if it is like uh, this patient, yeah, neurofibroma, schwannoma, yeah, and what else? Sufficient deficiencies. Yeah, Russia, perfect, Russia, yes. Extra medullary hematopoiesis, don't forget it. Thank you. And when we go to this case, and this is the previous exam, and this is the current exam. So what happened in this case? Peripheral consolidation of the right bank without not change into image. Yes, Marwa, Ivan, yeah. What do you think? What else? So, persistent consolidation, non-resolving consolidation, that's mean that you should put malignancy as one of the differential diagnosis or the top of differential diagnosis and one of the good differential bronchoalveolar carcinoma. Thank you, Marwa. So bronchoalveolar carcinoma when non-resolving pneumonia, you should put in your consideration, especially if we show you um, the current and you ask for the previous exam and it's still persistent. So when you are like this, you are thinking about unresolving pneumonia, which one of the most important malignancy that you should put it as until proved otherwise, lung cancer. And again, when we have multiple lesion of cavitation, uh, you have differential diagnosis, and one of them will be septic emboli, Wagner granulomatosis. Okay. In the new land. Yes, perfect. Uh, yes. So it, it will be uh, Wigner metastasis, fungal infection. All this could be with peripheral consolidation and some of them are capitating with wedge shape. So you are talking about, especially if he mentioned to you the young adult, so also you will think about the most important one, it will be septic emboli. So septic uh, emboli, if he is intravenous drug abuser, septic emboli, one of the best differential in this case. Okay. Uh, This case with batchy uh, area of areas of aerospace disease have lower predominance, lower loops predominance. Yes. You will think about. RDS, one of the good differential, respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary edema, pulmonary hemorrhage, nice. And you think about the cardiac size, if it is enlarged or not. So this is a clue for you to search for about the respiratory distress syndrome or pulmonary edema, pulmonary hemorrhage, with this very higher, very higher and uh, more central obesities, lower lobe predominance, peripheral sparing. Okay. This one is typical case. Prominent hyalur shadows, bilateral. <laughs> Bilateral symmetrical with baratracheal sarcoidosis. Thank you. Ivan, dua. It should be lymphoma, but is this sarcoidosis typical sites? Our baratracheal with bilateral hyalur. And you maybe you'll ask it by the examiner about the staging in the x ray. And uh, in the CT, it's easy to detect the sites three important sites of uh, 
differentiate of the uh, lymphadenopathy, and he will ask you about the affection of the parenchyma and the staging in the in the exam. Yes. So, what do you think about this? You already have this calcified breaks. Uh, maybe asbestosis, maybe asbestos related pleural disease. Nice, perfect, Nermin, Russia. And uh, as you see, they should mention that the lift hemithorax is reduced in volume. So there is a fiction. So the, if you mention asbestos exposure or asbestosis, which is a bit different entities, asbestosis have some lung changes, especially the interstitial lung changes. So uh, you, will you should check the lung window and to see if there is any lung changes in this case after you find the pleural plaques. Also, you, you can think about uh, something like fibrothorax after infection or hemorrhage. And finally, most operative, something in the past called bluru, bluruodesis. Yeah. Last case in chest before we shift. What do you think of this? When you find like tram track signs, especially when I make the zooming, when the, there is zooming and you can find the bronchic changes, yeah? And if you go to the CT, it is more easier. And when you find it in, is located in the upper loop, more in the upper loop with upper loop predominance, the bronchiectasis. So you are thinking about cystic fibrosis as a first differential diagnosis. It can be most infectious. It can be also allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which is hypersensitivity reaction for aspergillus. So when you go to the CT, you can find the, again, the bronchiectasis, and it is predominant to the upper loop. So cystic fibrosis, one of the best differential in this case. What do you think about this one? Liver with this appearance. Carcinoma. Yeah, if you try to describe it, you will find that there is nodular liver contour. And there is good sign here if you could find it that there is some capsular retraction Excellent. in the liver side. Yeah, in the liver surface and uh, there is this lesion with like a wedge shape appearance and it is increasing to the when the, you go to the periphery there is increased signal intensity and after uh, contrast there is enhancement 
you will go to check the delayed phase and to compare it with the arterial and portal phase. So uh, either you think about like cholangio, what do you think is it could be or not? Might be, but there is no biliary dilatation. So it's not, it's not very recommended in this case to put it as differential, first differential diagnosis. So let maybe we can think about something else, else like what Marwa mentioned that could be cirrhosis, but to be honest, just one like thing, maybe the codate is a bit hypertrophied. There is no typical cirrhotic features. Maybe some nodularity, but still, maybe pseudocirrhosis. So if you go to mention the pseudocirrhosis, what is the best uh, scenario you can think about? If you go to think about, yes. So thank you, Dua. So you think about uh, metastatic breast cancer, and there is multiple metastases in the liver, then this patient treated with treatment like chemotherapy, then he presents with this appearance. Yeah, I know that is very, very uh, like uh, difficult scenario, but still present. So when you find this appearance, don't forget the term of pseudocirrhosis, that sometimes the patients have multiple metastatic. So it gives uh, you like the picture of uh, pseudocirrhosis. Very easy one. I think this one is esophagus. And if you find the cervical spine, we are talking about the cervical esophagus. So we are in the proximal aspect of the esophagus. And this one is um, balsam diverticulum, zincar diverticulum, perfect. Uh, yeah, in the lateral view, there is outpouching along the posterior aspect of the cervical esophagus. So, zincar, yeah, zincar diverticulum, perfect. And we go to this one. What do you think about it? Lesion, which is uh, Cystic, multilocular. Yeah, cystic and multilocular, and uh, in the liver. So, what is your differential diagnosis? Could abscess. Abscess, yes. What else? Maybe metastatic, cystic metastasis, also, maybe hepatic cyst, maybe hydatic. Hydat. Perfect, yes. And this one was. Hepatic abscess, yeah. So what do you think about this? This is typical for the exam uh, that he gave you multiple lesions in the livers, in the liver, and he asked you about the differential diagnosis. In the short exam or spotting, you will find the clue. Search for the stomach, search for the pancreas. So metastatic disease will be the first differential. If not, again, you will think about something like fungal, like lymphoma, like multiple hepatic abscesses. You will ask for the contrast, because already this patient have contrast, and check the other phases if you have. This patient, metastatic disease, and you will search for the primate. Thank you. And if you go to this lesion, So in the CT, yeah, you have like cyst, Abbas, perfect. 
Okay, so we have this one which is colidocal anomaly uh, type one. Okay, colidocal anomaly or colidocal cyst. Thank you, Ivan. What do you think about this one? Abbas, osophageal versus, perfect. This one is very easy in the exam. Very easy one. From oral pseudodiverticulosis. Pseudodiverticulosis, osophageal pseudodiverticulosis. Diagnosis will be candidiasis, candida, yes, candida esophagitis. Thank you. Sporting case. Gastric mesus, lymph node. So the first differential will be gastric cancer. Yes, I agree with you. And uh, would be metastatic also. Could be lymphoma and could be metastasis. Uh, this was a surprise that this patient was metastatic disease from breast cancer. Uh, is not to be honest, uh, like uh, a spot diagnosis case, but good differential to think about metastasis, which is uh, far from our scope in this case. Okay. Um, This one. Yes, perfect. Nermin, Russia. Mucosil of appendix. Mucosil of the appendix. Perfect. I think you saw it, right? This one here and here. Okay. And this one is. Typical for the exam. Carcinoid. Carcinoid tumor. Okay. With differing appearance, central or calcifications, with differing, and you search for any small bowel dilatation and metastatic disease. This one, so you have this one like barium and this one have uh, MRI and you can see 
the terminal EDM have thickening. Yes. When you have terminal EDM thickening, you are thinking about Crohn's disease. Yes. You will search for uh, the examiner will ask you about the criteria and you will say that you are you will search for the skip lesions. and any complications. And uh, in the MRI, he will ask you about the signs of activity for Crohn's. Yes, fistula or sinus will be activity. Yes, especially you will search for any active, yeah any complications or active lesions in the uh, diffusion. So what do you think about this one? It could be typhylitis, might be, uh, and infectious colitis. It could be, again, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, and the clonic carcinoma. This one was infectious, was infectious colitis as a sequelae of diverticulitis. This one was typhylitis, yes. And uh, let's go to this case. This patient presents with abdominal pain. You can think about Crohn's as a differential, but it's not Crohn's. You can think also about lymphoma, but lymphoma have aneurysmal bowel dilatation is not like this case. Uh, this patient have like bowel edema for differential diagnosis. One of the causes that could be something related to uh, drug induced, so is is not very typical. But just to, to mention as a differential diagnosis. Now time for. I know that you like this, so let's have a look. Neuro, neuro cases, I know everyone like neuro cases. So patient, young patient with, you can describe that there is proptosis and there is enhancing intracranial mass lesion uh, on both sides of the optic nerve. So you will think about hemangioma, perfect. And it could be lymphatic malformation. Meningioma is not typical in this case. Yes, I agree with you that hemangioma will be the best option in this case especially the age of the patient. Uh, this one. So you are talking about tribal fracture. Yeah, tribal fracture, not just fracture. You will search for the items of tribot fracture. And uh, this one has zygomatico maxillary complex fractures, as you see here. So you are talking about tribot fracture. 
and there is fluid level in the maxillary antrum. Okay, let's go more further. This one is easy, I think you saw one case before, like this, okay. So what do you think about this? More obvious now. So the left cavernous sinus, as you see, is invaded by this mass. And this mass, as you see, the invading the cavernous sinus, where in the post contrast, you can see. Uh, this avid enhancing lesion. And you said, see the internal carotid, flow void signal, and how it is displaced. So you are talking about either meningioma or pituitary macroadenoma. I know that pituitary macro macroadenoma is not obvious to be like this, but this case was pituitary macroadenoma, not meningioma. But anyway, you will put both differential diagnosis. Uh, also, you can uh, watch one noma or tumoral spread infection as one of the differential. If, if you find a known primary, if, if you check the, the other images and you find like another source. If we go to this case, When you describe it, you would describe it as aggressive lesion. Don't forget uh, to comment in the ethmoid and uh, that there is, seems like there is erosions and the refraction and disruption. The lacrimal obstruction. And exactly there is extension to the lacrimal side. Uh, so lamina babericia also involved it. So it's aggressive lesion. You are talking about aggressive lesion, differential diagnosis, either sino, nasal, or fungal, perfect tenamine, Hassan, yes, or as Russia said, Wigner. So you are searching about something, uh, granulomatous disease as Wigner or sarcoid, or invasive fungal or sino nasal carcinoma. Less possibility to be lymphoma and the others. So you are searching about something distracted. Yes, perfect. So this one was Wigner, yes. Wigner granulomatosis. If you go to the barotid and you compare both barotid, you will find the pathology here. And when you find cystic pathology, unilateral in one side, you are going to mention that it could be the most famous tumor in the barotid will be bileomorphic. Yeah, either bileomorphic adenoma or carcinoma. There is one tumor which is more to be bilateral, Wharton tumor. This one was bileomorphic adenoma. Again, if you go to the barotid and you find bilateral cystic changes, You will think about like this one, you think about Jogren syndrome. Perfect. Thank you, Nirmin Islam. And this one will, will very famous in the exams. Any exam you will face it, and you will have discussion to differentiate it from the pseudotumor. So this one is the thyroid ophthalmopathy. You will check for the tend tendon attachment, if it is swollen or involved or not. 
and the distribution about the muscles. I am slow. Inferior rectus and mid rectus, the most area to be affected. You will talk about the fat and you will make a line, draw a line to check for the proptosis. So this one was thyroid orthopathy or ophthalmopathy. Yes. If you go to the pharynx and you check for the pharyngeal ear column, you will find something in the mesopharyngeal. Exactly. And then both otherwise, sometimes, to be honest, can be very small, and he will give you the bone window. When you find, like, bilateral otomastoiditis, go check for the nasopharynx. You will find the possibility to be nasopharyngeal. If you find unilateral, you, you can um, consider it until both otherwise that it could be nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So when you find uh, any affection in the mastoid, mastoid air cells, middle ear cavity, don't forget to check for the um, nasopharynx, especially in the old patient. And this is the MCQ question. And uh, if you go to this case, you will try to describe and uh, You check for the spaces, baropharyngeal spaces, masticator space, parotid space. You will find the uh, yeah. abscess with cellulitis. Yeah, that's nice. So you will find that there is infection and abscess, uh, uh, abscess formation uh, in the masticator space. So you will search for the cause, and you can see here that there is probably the source is here, dental origin, perfect. Nice. So there is dental origin for the abscess. This one is very famous spotting case, the exam. And they will ask you about the, uh, how to differentiate it from the Right, carotid body tumor. Yeah. You are thinking about carotid space mass. Carotid space mass, either baroganglioma, nerve sheath tumor, or vascular abnormality. Vagal schwannoma will be one of the good differential diagnoses here. And carotid, carotid body tumor. He will ask you about how to differentiate between both. One of them will be displacing both internal and external carotid. Which one? One of them will be displaying both. So which one? And as is Nirmin said, that there will be salt and labor appearance. So carotid body is playing exactly, carot carotid body is playing both internal and external carotid. There is discussion and this one is very important. Let's go more further. Uh, right parapharyngeal abscess. Perfect. Retropharyngeal abscess. And when you uh, mention the abscess, it's very important to check for the vascular affection. And you, if you check the vascular affection here, we will find that there is no vascular affection because this is the normal side. But if you go to the abnormal side, you'll find that there is vascular affection with carotid spasm or stenosis. That's the issue. So this patient is very critical that you comment in the carotid. And this is retropharyngeal abscess. Perfect. And if there is any variant, 
like uh, you know that sometimes there is kissing carotid or like there is um, not um, uh, they, they they are very very uh, stick together or beside each other calling like kissing abnormal uh, variants very important to mention it yes. thank you let's go to next case The entity, you will describe it. Yes, thank you, Dua. Bar of an injury, yes, thank you. Hear me. So the, the entity here, you will be describing clivus mass. Yeah, it could be clivus mass. And if you go to the post contrast, you will find this appearance. So you will think either primary as cordoma, perfect, from the clivus, or it could be uh, Okay, uh, I, one more, okay, thank you, Muhammad. Uh, so either metastatic or maybe chondrosarcoma. This one wa was cordoma, as typical site for cordoma, and enhancing lesion. Uh, differential diagnosis with chondrosarcoma, I agree with you. We'll check for T2. You will find in the T2, in the chondrosarcoma, very bright, the cartilage, the arcs and rings. So the pathology is here in the vertebral artery. So either you think about dissection, but it's not dissection, as you see. So you think about aneurysm, perfect dua. So this one, it could be pseudo aneurysm of the vertebral artery. It can be post to blunt trauma or penetrating trauma, yeah. So vascular injury. When you go to the, again, to the eye globes, spotting case. So low T2. Skull of the child. You should mention when you describe that this look like skull child child skull. So you are thinking about retinoblastoma until proved otherwise. So bilateral retinoblastoma, and you search for trilateral or quadri, whatever. But at least you are thinking about bilateral lesions in the eye globe in young young adult in uh, in a child. So you are thinking about retinoblastoma, most common globe tumor in childhood, in eye globe. And it, it have calcifications, the characteristics, and clinically leucuria. Okay, sorry, I will mute. Uh, can you mute yourself? Uh, okay, Muatasir Muhammad, yeah, thank you. Um, the skull, you, you, you see the skull, and this is look like skull of child. Yes, this is the key for you. Let's go to this one. Blow out fracture. Herniation. Yeah, there is a herniation of the fat. And uh, this is like radiology, radiology syndrome. 
when you are seeing something, you neglect others. <laughs> so try to not be satisfied easily. So you see the elephant here, but there is another elephant. You see it? Yeah, Ala. Thank you. You are here. So there is optic nerve neuritis. Yes. So this is like more important, or let's say that it's very important. So this patient have enhancement optic neuritis. Typical case for the exam. Bacchimeningia enhancement. And the differential will be either bacchimeningitis. High potential. Due to infection, I agree. Or. Moya, moya. High potential. Or high potential. Yeah, or, or high potential. Yeah, three. So bacchimeningitis as most infectious or metastasis if the patient have primary and this is secondary and finally don't forget the most important uh, the, not the most important but you can say the one of the famous especially for the exam the high boot tension intracranial high boot tension uh, this is the differential of back meningeal enhancement uh, i hope that uh, i can take like some uh, rabbit cases, or we can continue in this mode. Uh, uh, we have uh, still about nine minutes. So do you like to take some uh, X-rays with uh, tricky uh, differentials, or we continue in this? It's up to you. We have nine minutes. So I see until now X-rays. Rapid diagnosis, X-ray, okay. Let's shift because we have uh, to take, uh, as we mentioned every time, like the cases I will check now, sorry. So time to sit built and try to check the the image, I hope that uh, you can answer them quickly. So let's start with this. You activate your checklist already, I gave to you before. So you check for, for example, any air in the study, any pleural effusion, any collapse, consolidation, any retrocardiac obesity, and below the diaphragm, and any bony changes. So the, I see that Ahmed, yeah, perfect. Left pneumothorax, perfect. And don't be satisfied to check for any other pneumothorax, but in this case, was just one pneumothorax. And uh, in this one was something a bit more subtle. So you activate again your checklist below the diaphragm, the bone. I think when he make like this bony window, so check for the bone. Maybe it's good a clue, clue for you. Yeah, left shoulder dislocation and possibly also right shoulder dislocation. So the the articulation should be here and this one inferiorly located. So this means that there is shoulder dislocation. This one is easy one. A check for the bone, for the bone. No, this is pseudo sign. This is not the true sign. No, it's not. But if you go more further up, you will find the perfect Ahmed. Yes, thank you. 
and uh, if you search in the retrocardiac region double contour sorry yes so it is left atrial enlargement no it is retrocardiac obesity so it is hiatus hernia. hernia perfect another example for hiatus hernia and sometimes if you are in exam so you can say abscess as well but for the spotting hiatus hernia especially when it is continuous below the diaphragm and uh, when you go to this one you will find like foreign body so ingested foreign body perfect Nermin. this one is very critical for the exam if you miss it probably you will uh, miss much so be sure that you know all types of collapse exactly Nermin. so all types of collapse should be for you like spotting this one yeah, yeah. Lower left collapse, left lower loop collapse, which silhouetting the diaphragm here. So this means that left lower loop collapse, very critical. Again, left lower loop collapse, this more obvious. Yeah, Ahmed, everyone, another example. This one is very tricky. But already you are searching in the lower loop. Yeah, lower loop, lung mass, lung cancer. I'll try to make some zooming in this one. I focus in the pathology now. It's very subtle. Iron. No, above Heiler. Search for the apical pneumothorax you will find like here the lural line maybe the quality of image is not very high but i think maybe now you can see the lural line the white lural line sign one of the critical issues for the rapid reporting to check for the pneumothorax maybe this one is much easier sorry this one i think now for you will be easier to check the left pneumothorax. And for this one, left hilar mass, Ahmed, yes. When you, there is obliteration of the angle of the left hilar, so you are talking about left hilar mass. Again, left lower loop collapse, So this one, I hope that it uh, is better for you now. Let's check for this. Yes, mass here. Thank you, Dua. There is varatracheal mass. Yeah, it's good to mention mass. So lymphadenopathy, perfect. So I focus in the pathology, try to help you. Yes, clavicle. Yeah, there is a clavicle fracture, which is not easy. Again, left clavicular fracture, perfect. I mentioned to you the bone is one of the important checklists in the rabbit 
and in the spotting exam, Not very easy one, but there is a fracture here. Okay. One is easy one. Dr. Ahmed, yes. I wait you, Dr. Muhammad Adir. Maybe this is the last one because uh, we have less than one minute. So you want to make a fracture? Yeah, fracture. Yes. I wish that you enjoy and uh, everything uh, goes fine today. And we could repeat it uh, by the next week. Uh, if you have any question or suggestion or ideas, I will be happy to hear you, inshallah, in the group. And sorry for the delay today. Thank you, everyone. And uh, inshallah, yani... Thank you so much, Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you, Allah. السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل عام وانتم بخير رمضان كريم ان شاء الله سوري فور ديلي اند وي ميك ات ا بيت ليت توداي كان ستارت ريفريشينج كيسز انتل ذا اذر كوليجز جوين سو ذيس بيشنت وات دو يو ثينك Left anterior shoulder dislocation. Hello, thank you. So this is obvious that there is dislocation anteriorly, left shoulder, and this is similar case for the left shoulder dislocation. Um, we go further in musculoskeletal. So what do you think about this case? There is fracture in the base of the proximal phalanx. Yes, there. So, thank you. And if you go on this, what do you think? Yes. So this one, there is a distal phalanx fracture, comminuted fracture. In the rapid report, reporting uh, exam, uh, mostly it is acute uh, conditions, either inflammatory or uh, types of fractures or emergency cases. So uh, what do you think about this one? Uh, she take the over, <laughs> mashallah, most of the cases. So what do you think in this? Maybe sometimes it will not be fracture, but it can be like something like foreign body that the patient 
have foreign body and is radio opaque in the X-ray. And uh, obviously you can see that there is two views and uh, you can try to concentrate for first view. Then if you didn't find something, then go to the other view and check if you can find the, the pathology. In the exam, you have about uh, 30. Yes, so there is second metacarbon. I suppose that you, 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 you mentioned metacarbon, right? Metacarbon head fracture. So you have 30 and you are not allowed to miss more than three. If we go more further here and you can see that there is probably fracture, but I will try to help you because already in the exam, you have ability to make some zooming. So I focus in the portion that it have uh, the pathology. Sometimes it can be subtle. So the base of the fifth metacarbon, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, with training, you can, uh, inshallah, yani improve. And after improvement, you will find yourself that you are confident to to be able to answer most of them uh, correctly, inshallah. Uh, so middle, middle pharynx, little finger, yes. Okay. Hassan, perfect. So we have this. So uh, sometimes also you, you should search for the fracture. I mean, you are searching for the common sites, like start with the scaphoid, for example, then go to the line, the lucent line that busts through the basis of the metacarbals. Then you check the alignment of the uh, carbal bones, then go to check the, yes. So first metacarbal, perfect, yes. There is a fracture here, sorry. And uh, I think this one is more easy, the image quality. I hope that is fine. So you can sometimes, you cannot see the fracture line, but you can see the pigment with the fracture line. So, and it can be just in one view obvious. Maybe in the other view is not much obvious like this. So this one, Kurakoid, Coronoid, uh, um, coronoid fracture of the ulna. Yes, yes, Ale. And I think this one also similar, as you see here. Okay. This one is very typical. In every exam, you could get something like this, and also in the practice. Yes, so check the common sites, scaphoid and uh, radius. Maybe in the lateral view, it will be more easy to detect. Yes. This one is more easier one. I think is one. We could get it easily well. Yeah, distal armor.
there is already foreign body and there is distal phalanx fracture. I think this one is typical, distal phalangeal fracture. Already the patient have osteopenia. Is to be honest, is very subtle, but there is this the radial fracture. This one is very important, as you uh, should recognize it. I hope that you can. Yeah, you should check the alignment of the bones, especially the metacarpal heads, one of the common sites for the fractures. So if you check the uh, metacarpal head with the shaft of the second, yes. Thank you, Hassan. Yes. So you will find the fracture is here. Okay. This one is uh, easy. So fracture of the, this one or this one, what do you think? Yeah, this one. Sometimes the apophysis of the acromion give you uh, similar appearance of fracture, but this is not this is not a fracture. The fracture is here, in the, the lateral third of the clavicle. Yes. Already we mentioned this one. I will show you uh, maybe one more collection. As I see that uh, most of you are sleepy today, so we can just uh, make one quickly. Okay. So what do you think about this one? Perfect, Ala. You think about uh, baratracheal, there is fullness here in the baratracheal stripe. Uh, as you remember, when we talk about the stripes and lines, and uh, also when you see the angle of the mediastinum, is, is there is fullness in both angles. More, maybe you can see it more in the right side. So bilateral hyalur and baratracheal, you will think about, if you, if you go further, you will think about sarcoidosis here or lymphoma, but this one is typical for sarcoidosis and probably there is, uh, you, you'll be asked in the exam about the staging. Okay, let's go further. This one, after you check the your checklist, especially the lungs and the bones, 
uh, I think it will be difficult for you to detect the fracture of the clavicle here. So the, it will be the fracture of the right clavicle. Again, fracture of right clavicle. Uh, there is a vascular necrosis here, and you can see that the patient have prothesis in the other one, and already the patient have other fractures, but uh, is is not easy to detect. So I be, I take it easy uh, quickly. Uh, Okay. There is a bilateral uh, air space obesities. Yes. Alveolar air space obesities. Yes. This may, may be more typical for uh, sarcoidosis. Bilateral uh, hyler and maybe baratracheal. Uh, maybe this one also more obvious that there is enlarged lymph nodes with the fullness of the angles of the mediastinum. If you check this one, you maybe note something. I hope that you can detect it. Uh, it's one of the important checklists in the exam. And there is uh, a lot of discussion after if you detect it. He will ask you like, what is the cause and uh, what is the differential and so on. So if you go through the checklist, there is, you, you, you will mention already that there is maybe clear costophrenic angles. But if you go through the line of the billura, you will note maybe that there is widening here and there is billural thickening, yes. Then the discussion will go through the causes of the billural thickening and take care, okay? Uh, it's important checklist point. Uh, the retrocardiac in general, one of the important review areas, the retrocardiac region. So you should check for any uh, abnormality like this and uh, maybe mass, but when you, so, so, uh, when you see the mass is uh, already connected to the diaphragm or uh, the obesity is uh, like confluent with the diaphragm, so think about uh, like something benign like hernias. Yes. So in the right, in the left side, and probably anteriorly, so you are talking about, uh, sorry, in the, left, in the left side, and uh, it is posteriorly, you are talking about Bogdalic. Yeah, Bogdalic is posterior hernia. So it could be Bogdalic hernia. Anyway, you will, you will mention it in the X-ray as uh, obesity, retrocardiac obesity and uh, mass or whatever, and for differential. The most important when you check the cardiac lines, the silhouetting. If you find any obesity silhouetting the cardiac uh, borders, for example, here, if you go to the right side, you will find something maybe silhouetting the right aspect. Then the question will be either is it consolidation or collapse. If you find like any signs of volume loss, so you are going to mention that could be 
collapse. If you didn't find, so maybe consolidation. Sure that if you go the, the lateral view, it will be better. Thank you, uh, Alaa. Yes. So anyway, you will mention as consolidation in the which loop there. It will be the opacity will be in the middle loop. Exactly. Yes. This one, uh, just to, uh, to, to know uh, as a variant, if there is the aortic obesity or the aortic outline is in the right side, so right side of the aortic arch. And when you find the right side of the aortic arch, search for any associated, like if the, this patient have dextrocardia, for example. So you will find, for example, that the gastric fundus as well is in the right side. So maybe there is associated manifestation. Yes, Sumaya, thank you. This one is typical, very typical in the exam. I think if you go in any exam, you will probably find it, whatever short or long or, but this is very important for the exam. And there is a lot of discussion. Whatever the exam, yes. The density of the bone is increased. Then in your mind, try to find this patient is young or old. If he's old or adult, so you are thinking about maybe metastasis, lymphoma, a lot of uh, differential uh, related to the adult. If he's young, then think about like osteopetrosis, for example. Yes, don't forget sickle cell, sickle patient. Sickle cell anemia is very important especially for the FRCR. Again, uh, the bones is important in the checklist. So don't forget the clavicle. If you go to the, they have many examples for the clavicle. I think maybe if you go not in the lateral aspect of the clavicle. If you go through the medial end of the clavicle, you will find that there is another fracture. Yes. Sometimes it can be difficult like this. So take care. Uh, one of the good key that you see that the clavicle with the sternum the articulation, it should be like in good alignment in one uh, line. You can see that this, there is mal alignment here and there is uh, a fracture line here, yes. Uh, portable patient and uh, first of all, check the lines, tubes, if there is any lines of tubes. And finally, after you finish your checklist, you will find something here. Again, clavicle fracture. We have less than uh, 10 minutes. Um, maybe this one, uh, if I try to make zooming, then maybe you can mention what it could be. There is multiple rib fractures, nice. This patient have nasogastric tube, you will mention and comment in situ, okay? And what else? Yes, refractions. And, yes, what else? And if you have a child and you have 
posterior refraction. You shouldn't stop in uh, conversation with the examiner because if you stop in conversation, yes, you will lose marks. So you should conti continuously to mention that posterior refractures, then you will uh, go through the non-accidental injury, child abuse, yes. So quickly, you should catch the abnormality, then don't stop, go through the, that you know that child abuse, especially the sites, metaphysial corner fractures, posterior fractures, you will mention that you will do CT brain for this patient, and uh, you will discuss with the pediatric, uh, that team that you will go through the uh, skeletal survey, for example, or the protocol, yes, for subdural, Hematomas. This one view, I think, from the view you can uh, already see the abnormality. I think it's obvious. Is it obvious or not? Yes. We have less than seven minutes. Yes, fractured sternum. Okay. Um, this one is typical and is critical. You should catch it uh, quickly. You should catch it quickly. Yes, nemo peritoneum, perfect. Free gas under diaphragm. Yes, Rania, thank you. Our new star. Uh, yes, this one. Again, you should catch it quickly. Again, Sumaya, perfect. Nemo peritoneum, free gas. You will have multiple examples, but you should uh, recognize them very quickly and they are critical. Okay, when we go to this patient, the most obvious abnormality in this patient will be Yes, will be the cardiomegaly and wide mediastinum, perfect. And there is bilateral lung obesities. Then you are talking about this triad, triad. You will think about maybe aortic injury, but uh, with the pulmonary manifestation, maybe will not um, interpret uh, the aortic injury. So you are talking about probably pulmonary edema. Yes, pulmonary cardiogenic, pulmonary edema. Perfect, Ara. This one, I think, is easy. Sometimes uh, it can be a bit full that uh, you can see the humerus as like this. So this note is not dislocation. It's not dislocation. Yes. Uh, but you can sometimes see uh, the silhouetting side, what we mentioned uh, from a while, it was here in the right middle loop, but this one, it is in the left side, in the left cardiac border, silhouetting the left cardiac border. So we are talking about, uh, yes, lingula. So this is the site of lingula, here the middle loop, lingula uh, consolidation, perfect. Uh, check your checklist especially the sides of the film. And there is a line, so you should comment that it is in situ or displaced or whatever. And it is a difficult one, but we have the nice stars, so I hope that uh, someone can catch it. Inshallah. Uh, to be honest, it's very critical in the exam. They like it so much. Uh, spotting short questions, uh, they 
maybe in every exam you will find one of them. So uh, they are typical. The key that you, you search for double lines, sometimes, especially in this type. For example, here there is a line of the cardiac line and the cardiac border. Then probably if you go, you will find another line, especially that you didn't find retrocardiac area as you see it in regular way. Yes, so this is the left lower loop collapse. This is typical for left lower loop collapse, perfect. Typical for the exam, you will find one of the types of the collapse, either in the other upper loop, lower loop, middle, whatever. So didn't, don't forget it. You will find in the exam, you remember me. Again, um, this is another type of collapse. Again, the same one, left lower loop collapse. Another type of uh, image can just see how it look, look the retrocardiac. Okay, very critical. Uh, just X-ray checklist. You will activate your checklist in your mind. Uh, we have less than two minutes to finish. So when you go to the checklist, probably you will find uh, like lung lesion here. Yes, subtle lesion, but is present. Again, similar one, the review areas, the abysses of the lung. So you go through the abysses of lung. And in the, if you go to the projection of the clavicle, you will find posterior. There is lesion, and this lesion maybe have also some um, lung stranding, okay? So left lung mass. Cardiomegaly, probably. There is fusion rising to the axilla, and there is interstitial edema. So maybe this patient have cardiogenic pulmonary edema with pleural effusion. Thank you, Rania. Yes. Uh, this one again, maybe I will leave you to catch it. Who will be the, our star today to catch it quickly? Less than one minute. Yes, clavicle fracture. Yeah. Uh, Rania, thank you, our new star, <laughs> but not a nice catch. Uh, I hope that you enjoy today uh, the short uh, dose before Ramadan and uh, inshallah Ramadan Kareem for everyone. Uh, this one again, clavicle fracture, but in the medial end, you can see it here. And uh, thank you for uh, attending today and uh, inshallah uh, next Sunday. See you. Assalamu alaikum.